all the pieces we need to put things right on about climate change, desertification, biodiversity loss, and almost every other problem is flowing from those. Um, almost all the pieces came into being in the tail end of the last millennium. There's one piece missing, and that is something to unite team humanity, to make people realize we've got to stop bickering over religions and organized churches and uh, all these things that we're bickering over that are minor compared with human survival. We are team humanity. And the only thing I can see that will unite us is a recognition of the seriousness of climate change. Once we recognize the seriousness of that, uh, we will start to do what we have to do and not what we want to do, and we will stop this bickering. So I long for the seriousness of climate change to be fully understood by a tipping point number of humans. If we can't achieve that fairly soon, uh, we're in deep trouble. Today, uh, the, I realize that the only way we can manage to avoid these catastrophes uh, coming at us from all angles is to manage holistically, embracing all science, sciences and traditional and other sources of knowledge. When you put a team of us together, integrated scientists, it's a little bit like horses, if I could use that analogy, Horses have eyes on the side of their heads, not in the front, like carnivores, so that they can see all around. But we put a team of horses together and put leather blinkers on so that they can't see except forward. And that's like putting a team of scientists together, each trained in a narrow discipline. What, what our scientific training means, means a narrow, sharp training. So you put a team of blinkered horses together and they actually can't see as much as one horse with no blinkers, <laughs> if that's a way of doing it. So we've discovered a simple way where you or I or any government can develop policies holistically embracing all science, etc. And uh, that's what we do. Well, it changes it tremendously and, and many people are realizing that and we're working with thousands of them you know, on five of the seven continents at the moment. The only continents we're not working on are the Arctic and the Antarctic. But all other continents, we've got people beginning to manage holistically, understand it. Not everybody does it to perfection. That doesn't matter. If you take the most leading example we have, which is the place in Africa, uh, where I actually donated land for the benefit of the people of Africa, and we run a learning site there where people can come and learn, uh, we, we're seeing astounding results and we've done nothing perfectly. We've made many mistakes and errors. It doesn't matter if you get it approximately right, you start to see amazing results. Uh, when I say amazing results, if you take that land, it was desertifying very badly. We increased the livestock 400%, planned the grazing after, after making the decisions holistically, as I'm talking about. Um, now, we've just come through five years of average and below average rainfall. This year we got the worst rainfall any of us can remember for the last 15 years. We've never seen it so dry for a long time, but we produced more grass, shrubs, forage for wildlife, for the livestock, than we ever could have produced in the best of years in the past. And right now we're struggling to find the money and the cattle to double up the number of animals just to keep pace with the production of the land now that the available rainfall is effective again once more. That's when I got the final missing piece of the puzzle, which was that we couldn't just manage land. Uh, you cannot manage land. It's like me giving you a glass of water and saying manage the hydrogen in that water, you can't. It's, it's now integrated totally with the oxygen. It is a different subject. The land of Sweden or Afghanistan or anywhere else is so tied to the culture of the people that you can only manage people and land together as one indivisible entity. Now, when you look at the economy, the only economy that can sustain any community or nation in the end is derived from the photosynthetic process. That means from green plants, essentially, growing on regenerating soil. 
And so what I realized in the, in the 80s, early 80s, was the only thing we could meaningfully manage because of its complexity was economy, culture and society and land as one indivisible entity. And that's when we developed a, the concept of a holistic context to guide all our policy actions management. So in the grazing you talk about, yes, I had learned how to uh, adopt uh, actually 300 years of military experience in immediate battlefield planning. How had they dealt with a very complicated situation ever changing? And I simply used their techniques and adapted them to the biological needs we had to integrate wildlife crops, livestock, different soil types, erratic seasons, and that worked. But at that point is when I was getting good results and also uh, failures because I hadn't yet got the economy and the culture into it. And then in the 80s we got that. And since then, frankly, we've had consistent results where anybody does it. Now those criticisms are nothing new, but none of the criticisms are actually relevant to the work we're doing. They're all criticizing old beliefs that they hold. That, you know, they're criticizing grazing systems. Well, I did in the 60s. That's why I developed a planning process to overcome those. And none of, nobody who's ever studied what we're doing has criticized it. Well, I think we're seeing one now. The fact that that Ted, you see, I've been saying the same stuff for many, many years. Over 30 years ago, I put 2,000 scientists through training for the US government, okay? But we hadn't got internet in those times, so institutions were able to crush that new thinking, just as they did to the Hungarian doctor or anyone else. Uh, not because people are bad, just because of how complexity operates in, in institutions. And it's nothing personal, it's happened to everyone. Now, um, now we've got internet, now we've got uh, the technology to be able to talk to more people. And the fact that I was able to speak for 20 minutes at TED, mm. going to now, as far as I can see, around about 3 million people and going up by over a thousand a day still, that has finally been a tipping point. The only thing I would wish for, and it's the whole purpose of our institution, is to get the holistic framework that I'm talking about into international consciousness rapidly to avert tragedy beyond imagination that is going to be hitting us.